How accurate is your 3D printer? It's an important question, especially if the parts you print need to fit with other real objects and align just right. Many people have tried to come up with different clearance tests and calibration cubes and other sorts of models to try and do this, but in my opinion, it will come up just a little bit short. So I decided to put my skills to the test and have a crack at it myself. The design I've come up with did significantly improve my print accuracy and it can do the same for you too. Probably the most popular object for calibrating your printer accuracy is the good old calibration cube. There are many different variations on this, but typically it's your standard six-sided cube, about 20 to 30 millimeters along each edge, with X, Y, and Z markings on like, each of the faces, and probably a logo on one side. But just because it's popular doesn't mean it's perfect. So let me point out a couple of things that I see as opportunities for improvement. Firstly, the size of the measurement you take will determine the amount of error in that measurement. For example, if you're using a ruler with one millimeter increments and measure a small cube at nine millimeters, that's actually 10, you've got an error of around 10%, which is quite a lot. However, if you use the same tool, but the cube is 100 millimeters and you read it as 99, the error now is only 1%. Same tool, same principle, same skills, just a larger measurement. Secondly, measuring outside dimensions only just isn't enough. I say this because when we measure like that, we don't make any accommodation for errors in the line width, which can be affected by things like filament tolerance and extrusion ratio. If you like to under extrude your prints, for example, by like 5% for aesthetic quality, and then you calibrate your printer at this setting, then you'll probably measure it as fractionally undersized and change the steps per millimeter to increase the size. Problem is, when you do a larger print, it's gonna come out too large. What we need to find is the center point of the extrusion line and base our measurements on that. And you guessed it, the only way to do that is internal and external dimensions. Thirdly, with a single dimension, we also don't have any understanding of any stretching or shrinkage that could occur when like cooling, for example. So the way we account for this, a little bit better than we have been at least, is by taking two measurements at two separate sizes. When we do that, we understand if the dimension is proportional to the size and thus if it can be compensated for with scaling or if it's like just a line width error. Fourth, while X, Y, and Z letters on the faces is a pretty good idea in general to let you know the orientation the object was in when it was printed, putting symbols that could introduce small bumps or uneven surfaces on those critical measurement faces will modify the accuracy of your measurement. So by keeping the measurement faces clear of other features, we should be able to reduce that error. Fifth, we have skew. Skew is a measurement of how far apart two axes are from being perpendicular. So for example, your X and Y axes should always move per perfectly at 90 degrees to each other. This means that when making a right angle shape or any other angle, it will come out at what it should be. Assembly error though, often means that your axes aren't 90 degrees, but if you try hard enough, maybe you manage like 89.8. The problem is even 0.2 degrees when measured over a 300 millimeter bed is an error of over one millimeter. If you have holes that need to be perfectly aligned to a real object that turn out one millimeter out of place, that's probably going to cause issues, especially if you rotate the print next time and the skew acts in a different orientation. Skew is important, so we shouldn't overlook it. So what's the solution? Well, of course, that's what I've been working on. It looks like this, and I call it the calibration flower because it's used for calibration and it looks... When printed, it provides a maximum measurement size of 100 millimeters, internal and external measuring faces, 50 and 100 millimeter measurement sizes, totally clear faces for accurate reading, diagonal measurements for calibrating skew, and of course, an accompanying spreadsheet calculator to help you get the best results with minimal effort. There's also a written guide provided with the STL too. First step, once you've got it, is obviously printing. While some tests tell you to have like special settings for printing calibration objects, I think that's a bit daft because that's not how your real designs are being printed. Instead, just use whatever your normal settings are that you always use, and then 
you know what to expect when your final design is printed using the same settings. For the filament, it's worth repeating with each different type of filament you use as they do have slightly different properties. For the print orientation, there's no need to scale it, size it, rotate it or flip it or anything. Just drop it into your slicer, it'll go exactly where you need. There are two little arrows on the top face and these are your positive X and positive Y directions so you know the orientation in which it was printed. Once printing is finished, try to avoid moving it while still warm. Leave it to cool so you don't have any chance of deforming it or damaging it when removing from the bed because obviously this will affect your results. Then you need to measure. Digital vernier or dial gauge calipers are ideal as these are quick to use and allow for internal and external measurement. Use the best pair of calipers you have as accuracy here is the name of the game. Here are all the locations you need to measure. Measure from the face adjacent to each number to the face adjacent to the same number on the opposite side. Every dimension will be around 50 millimeters or 100 millimeters. If they are more than two to three millimeters different, then you're probably measuring in the wrong location. When taking measurements, remove and reposition the calipers three times and take three readings. Type each reading into the corresponding box on the calculator and it will then calculate the average for you. Repeat this process for each of the 10 positions. This is 30 readings, so quite a few, but trust me, it's worth it. The calculator then processes this data and identifies the percentage error on X and Y and also the amount of skew and the correction factor that you need to make. Below this part of the calculator, there are dynamic text fields which can be copied into either your Marlin firmware or Clipper config file to implement the skew correction factors that are specific to what you've just printed. If the measurements on X and Y are more than one millimeter away from the target, then your steps per millimeter is likely probably incorrect. But if your dimensions are close, then the XY shrinkage in your slicer is a great place to implement varied expansion rates for different filaments. For Super Slicer, the slicer I currently use and recommend, this can be found in the filament page. Once you've made the necessary adjustments, the best way to check that everything went to plan is to repeat the print with the same material and take new measurements. Hopefully, you should find that the error is dramatically reduced compared to your first print. Finally, congratulate yourself on a job well done and get going with your next 3D printing project. The link for the STL file with the written guide and calculator is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, good luck with your calibration, and I'll see you in the next one.